Hi folks, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Life Coaching. And we're here for the Larry and Mark show. We're actually going to begin a series for Larry speaking about his experience all these decades as a pastor um, and as somebody who coaches people through life how to get unstuck spiritually think you know uh, in the spiritual realm in of their life and in his experience uh, all the people that he's worked with they, they they go through three steps so I'll let him tell you about that but this is the first in a series of what did you have done about 10 or so or eight or yeah uh, 10 or yeah a little more no, 10 or 11 something like 10 that or 11. Okay, yeah. so episode one of uh, getting unstuck. And yeah. the first story is about Sarah. So Larry, take it away. Uh, yeah, um, uh, all, I should just mention at the, at the outset that all, all of these are true stories. These are real people. Um, I, I have, of course, changed the names. The names are not, are, are, are not the right names. Uh, and I've changed uh, a, a few of the details um, just to, you know, maintain confidentiality and protect people's identity and all of that stuff. So, uh, yeah, the, the first scenario is um, uh, a woman, brilliant, brilliant woman, um, <clears throat> one of those... Um, in her in her background, she was she was uh, raised in a in a home that really valued education. They really valued reading. She had parents that read all the time and read to her all the time, and exposed her to um, all sorts of uh, uh, opportunities for for learning and exploring and that kind of thing. And she was always um, attracted to uh, the, the sciences. I think in particular. And more specifically, as she got older, to the biological sciences. Hey, Larry, and uh, um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is you do these stories. Just to take notes. I'm just going to make a, a gene, genogram out, just so okay. I can I can picture what you're talking about. H how old was Sarah when this particular event or bit of coaching took place? Mm, uh, 40s, early 40s. Okay. Yeah, let's, um, I would guess about 42, something like that. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, so she was always attracted to um, uh, science. And, and then as she got older, uh, specifically the biological sciences, and I, I believe that she majored in biology or, or cellular, cellular biology, I think, uh, when she was in college. Um, um, I don't know if it's significant, but she's an only child. Um, her uh, parents were, are both, um, were, are both, uh, professional people. Um, her, I'm trying to remember, I think her mother, one of her parents is a physician. I think it was her mother is a physician and her father is a college professor. Um, so very, you know, raised in a very academic home, lots of um, opportunities to, um, to study and grow. And, she, and I think uh, uh, by her own, um, uh, as she tells her story, she tells it as um, being really uh, not only challenged, but encouraged um, I don't think she experienced what a lot of little girls experience in, in the United States, which is, um, uh, oh, that's a boy's thing, you know, and, and all that the stuff. The opposite of that she experienced. Yeah. Yeah. She was encouraged. So, um, uh, she, uh, and her home, as far as religion is concerned, um, uh, was a kind of um, nominal, I, I would guess. Um, they were not irreligious, I wouldn't say, um, but um, there was there was some 
church background. Uh, I believe they went to an Episcopal church, if I recall correctly. Um, but there wasn't much discussion about that kind of thing. But when she got into high school, she connected with a Christian group there. She, she was invited to a Christian group by a friend. I, I think it was Young Life. Um, and um, met a lot of uh, people that she really liked there. She really enjoyed being with that group. Um, and, and not only their meetings, but their activities. And they had summer camps that were um, uh, challenging and fun and exciting. And um, she really uh, connected with that group and um, had what she would describe as a born again experience. Um, and followed that with uh, being baptized in um, uh, one of her friend's churches. And what, but what year in high school did she have the born again experience? Do you remember? Uh, sophomore, I believe. How about that. Yeah, I, I think sophomore. Um, college, um, as I said, she majored, uh, I believe, in. Um, I know it was one of the biological sciences, as I recall. Uh, it, it was cell biology that she was really fascinated with and dug into, but she was also uh, connected with a Christian group in college and they had a, um, the, the Christian group had a, um, uh, it was almost like a, a fraternity or sorority house, um, but, uh, and, but men and women both lived in it. Um, it was, it was a very, uh, it was, it was evangelical Christian. They were very, um, uh, strict about keeping the men and women separate from each other. It was a big yeah. old house. Blue sidewalks and pink sidewalks, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, uh, so the, the man, the room for the guys was on one side and the room for the women was on the other side. And, uh, but they did have common areas and they, they had like daily Bible studies and stuff. I mean, they were really immersed into it. And um, in that, in that same Christian group that she was a part of sponsored um, one of these um, um, creation versus evolution debates. Who um, was that guy, Josh? Uh, Josh McDowell, you think Josh about Josh McDowell. Yeah, he led those discussions a lot of times on college campuses. Yeah, and and there were a number of people that that did those. Um, I think still do actually. Um, so uh, she was getting that message. What the message that she was getting from this group that she was very emotionally attached to, and and uh, had that's where most of her friends were. Uh, she admired them and respected them. And then they were bringing in these intelligent people um, who were making an argument that the creation stories in the book of Genesis were to be taken at face value, that they were literal. And then in her classes, she was learning the opposite. She was seeing more and more evidence for the fact that life evolved slowly due to natural um, selection over a long, long period of time. And those two things, um, I think she was able to hold them in tension really for quite a while. Um, and, and I think the way that she held them in tension was by uh, ignoring one world when she was in the other one. Um, so uh, after college, she went to graduate school. She became a geneticist. Um, she was actually uh, a part of uh, the team that was led by uh, Francis Collins, who's, who's now the uh, uh, director of the um, uh, National Science Foundation. He's, uh, everybody knows uh, Tony Fauci because he's been on the news all the time, all through the pandemic. Um, Francis Collins. Anthony, Anthony, usually. <laughs> Yeah, well, his friends call him Tony. Uh, yeah, um, Francis Collins is Dr. Fauci's boss. Oh. So, so this woman, Sarah, uh, was 
was part of the team pri prior to being at uh, the National Science Foundation, um, Francis Collins led the uh, Human Genome Project. Um, and his he and his team were the first ones to map, first ones in the world, to, to map the complete human genome. Um, so, you know, which has tremendous uh, implications. So she, she was, you know, really high level. Um, she's part of that team of geneticists that actually did that mapping and unraveled that, that uh, very, very complex uh, story of how human beings are genetically put together. So she, she was, you know, like totally wrapped up in that, uh, consumed with it. Um, and yet, at the same time, um, still staying connected with, with several of those people from college and um, several of the people from that, that Christian group, the friends that she had made there. Um, and, and she was active, well, active. I mean, she actively attended um, an evangelical church. So it was, it was kind of like two different worlds you know, the, the world at work and the world at church and, and these two worlds, this would be how she described it. The, these two worlds had um, a, a conflicting ideology when it came to origins. So, so talk about the stuckness. Yeah. So um, I, I think she kept it, you know, in, in tension for quite a while. Um, but then I, I just got to the place where she couldn't do that anymore, um, where it, it just, uh, she's too smart and too deep thinking to go on like that. So there, there came a, a time, and, and I, I don't know that anything necessarily triggered it. I mean, specifically, there there wasn't, as far as I know, there wasn't any sort of big a, trauma. A lifetime of science versus Christianity heading for mm -hmm. ultimate, you know, discussion and conversation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people go through, a, um, you know, they have a crisis of faith. And, and some of it's, I mean, just, I mean, huge things happen. You know, a child dies and, and it. It, um, it causes a crisis of faith, uh, understandably, but nothing like that with her. This, this was more of a, like you said, just a, um, I'm on these two paths <laughs> and, and they're going to converge. Yeah. Um, and, and at some point in, in her late thirties, I think, or very early forties, she, they, they converged like and she, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and the big struggle for her was that she had been taught in her Christian setting that if she rejected a literalistic reading of the first three chapters of Genesis, she would therefore be declaring that the Bible was untrue. And uh, several preachers had, had essentially told her, if you do that, you might as well throw the whole thing away. So the tension for her was feeling oh, like, yeah, yeah. Well, if, 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 if I let go of this, then there's nothing in this, this book, this sacred book that I can hold on to and that I can trust. Um, or if there is anything in it, there's no way to tell which is the good stuff and which is the bad stuff. So it, it really, it, it went beyond intellect for her. It produced a, a, uh, a, a deep uh, uh, turmoil within, and and uh, she described it as as being being stuck, which which brought me to a metaphor, and and the metaphor uh, that that I've that I used with all all of these people, and uh, still resonates with me. Uh, a very simple metaphor, you know. You're uh, picture yourself. You're out hiking, and uh, you you step in um, mud, deep, thick mud, quicksand, something like that. And I mean, you're stuck 
because there's something sucking you back. It's holding you down. And, and so uh, you mentioned at the start um, kind of three steps to getting out of that. Um, step one is you have to get unstuck. You, you've got to pull against the sucking and get your feet and legs out of there, you know. Without uh, that's the, shoe. Huh? Without losing your shoe. Yeah, yeah, without losing Prefer your shoe. Yeah, preferably. <laughs> and then step two is now now your hiking boots are are completely caked with mud. Now, probably you can move. You, you can probably walk that way, but you're really going to be slowed down. You're really going to be hindered. So after mm -hmm. we've been spiritually and or emotionally stuck, um, I, I think almost always there are, there are things that are still slowing us down holding us back. And so step two is knock the mud off your boots. And it's, it's, it's possible to get out of the mud and to knock the mud off your boots, but still not go anywhere. You, you could choose to just stay there, you know, well, now I'm free. Here I am. Um, but in life, that's not the, that's not the best option. The best option would be to progress, to, to move on. Now you're free. Let's walk in that freedom. Let's so experience that freedom. Specifically for Sarah, what yeah. did the being stuck in the quicksand, the mud, feel like, look like for her? It, it I think it's, you know, again, uh, I, I, I'm reading some into it because I'm, I'm, you know, she's not here to answer for herself. But I, I think what it felt like for her was um, that she was at a an irreconcilable place um either i throw away my beliefs my friends the scripture uh which i which has given me peace and has been the foundation of my life and has for a long time been the a deep satisfying part of who i am either i throw that away or i throw away everything that I'm learning so and everything that I'm doing a, a massive cognitive dissonance yeah. that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Call that a crisis. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a, excellent. Yeah. A great way to put it. Massive cognizant dissonance, you know, just, uh, uh, you, damned if you do damned, if you don't, I can't go any direction. I'm, I'm stuck. How'd she get out of the mud? Um, she, uh, she's well, she, she's sought out help, um, in this case, me. <laughs> um, and, um, uh, what we did together was examine those beliefs and, um, uh, she being a very intellectual person really, really took to reading. She was one of those people that, uh, every book you recommend, it was, you know, the next day you'd get a message that said, okay, wow. I read, okay, I read that. Now what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> wow. um, and she was able because of her connections to, uh, uh, sit down and talk with Francis Collins. And that really, I think that helped her more than anything because, it, uh, she reported that in the course of their conversation, he, he, he very gently listened to her and, uh, but then very gently said, uh, and I believe I'm, I'm close to quoting, he said, um, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with the Bible. There's just something wrong with the way we interpret the Bible. And that clicked for her. And she thought, oh, maybe the problem is that I'm looking at the text wrong. So together we were able to um, deconstruct the the uh, the theology around that text and to and to begin to look at that text um, in the context of of what it really meant in ancient Near Eastern culture um, and and see that it's primarily a text about that that is a, a symbolic text that's teaching us um, eternal lessons about about who God is, who we are as people, um, 
it is it is not a scientific te te text that is uh, trying to teach us exactly biologically what happened to the origins and that sort of thing. So, and, and another analogy that we used in the course of the whole thing was uh, um, that for her, and and I believe she she's the one that first brought this to me. Um, she, she said something to the effect of, uh, "I," and this was close to the end of our time together. She said, um, "I see now that Jesus is the center." And then we build this this uh, philosophy, this theology, this belief structure around Jesus. And in my case, it has it had all these planks about, um, um, you know, God spoke and the world popped into existence 6,000 years ago kind of thing. Um, and now I realize that, that this house that I built around Jesus, a large part of it has to be torn down and, and remodeled, but the heart, the center, Jesus gotcha. doesn't go anywhere. Gotcha. Um, and that and that gave her great great comfort, and and she was able to um, to not only uh, get unstuck like that, but a part of, for her, I think part of the walking in freedom was to stay connected to those friends that she had made, um, and, uh, without feeling like she had to convince them of yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, one of my phrases I really like in having conflict with people is, "Can we can we agree to disagree?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing cowardly about. You know, if two people are set in in different opinions, that's not going to change. Why have Why have there be contention? Why can't we just agree to disagree on that point? I like that. Yeah. So so yeah. how did you get the mud off her off her shoes as she was starting to? Walked in. I, I, I think that was the the remodeling of the house part. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I know I'm I'm mixing metaphors here, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like crazy, but many um, metaphors as you want to make. Yeah, but if you put three of them at once, it might, I might get confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but but for her, I think it was um, a process of uh, digging in, going back, and and really studying those origin texts in Genesis and Isaiah and elsewhere um, and, and looking into, uh, uh, I, know, I know one thing that really helped was um, she, she, she discovered, I mean, she didn't discover, but for herself, she discovered um, a, a whole, there's a whole bunch of other ancient Near Eastern creation stories Nice. which in some ways are very similar, but in significant yeah. ways are very different. So I think that was part of knocking the mud off was seeing that, um, um, uh, for example, in, in that part of the Old Testament, when it talks about the sea, that in ancient Near Eastern thought, uh, the sea represents chaos. Um, it's, it's a scary place. People go out there, they never come back. The sea can rise up uh, with power that is you can't you can't stop, and it can destroy your whole village. You know, yeah. um, so uh, she she began to read the text with through those kinds of eyes. Oh, I get but it. It's we're just talking somebody, about chaos. When somebody has cognitive dissonance, mm. they are searching, they are reading, they are listening to books, they're seeking help. All they want is a paradigm that makes sense that, you know, there's, it's square with their mind and their heart and their integrity and their faith all at the same time. And it's sometimes you got to get do a lot of work to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it look like to Sarah to walk in, in her freedom? Uh, re, uh, or not, I shouldn't say re, but staying connected to her friends who saw things differently um, and um, keeping that friendship uh, built on 
you know, things that matter, like I care about you and where's your life going. And, and, uh, <clears throat> uh, and, and for her, the excitement of being part of a project that has the potential to uh, bring such health and healing to so many people. I mean, through part of the fallout of all that yeah. genetic research is. It does sound like a you know, real bit of freedom for her. So yeah. it's helpful for people who are stuck in a spiritual conundrum, uh, something that's intellectually challenging and emotionally painful to mm -hmm. get help to to seek someone like yourself out um how can those people out there we're going to be telling different stories about a crisis of faith but how can these people locate you find you reach out to you if they if they have a discussion a conversation that they would like to to have along the lines of this strikes me as not just a spiritual issue there might be childhood shame. There might be childhood abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's, there's so many things that might complicate it. So you need a helper who has experience not only in spiritual things, but in life and in psychological things. So how do they get a hold of Larry? I don't know. <laughs> That's the best way. Uh uh email i guess uh would that be best you think yeah we should have yeah. it flashing on your i don't <laughs> yeah. know how to do that so what's your email uh dr lawrence taylor at gmail hey that's pretty easy dr lawrence taylor at gmail.com yeah dr just dr not DR. DR. not spelled out but dr yeah at um, gmail i wanted to say just a couple of quick things uh, one is I like your Christmas tree, uh, Dr. Larry. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, there. We we, um, <laughs> uh, we hadn't done a show in a while because of Christmas, so uh, I hadn't noticed that uh, uh, there was a tree. So so it sort of perked up my holiday spirit there. But yeah. people who are watching the channel might say, "Oh, what is this channel? It started out as marriage counseling." And then Mark went on this narcissistic abuse syndrome kick. And now they're doing dream analysis and um, they're reading lots of poetry. They're still doing marital counseling stuff. And now to add to all that eclectic material, we're offering a, a spiritual leader who is offering help for people in emotional pain around cognitive dissonance or other spiritual pain. And why is it that way? Um, I would say, because God led me to do it. I, I do believe in God. I, I, I do want to say, I had, a, I had a conversation with a really smart guy the other day. And I said, how, how can you not believe in God? And he says, because I, because I believe in science. And I said, have you been to the beach? Have you been to the mountains? Do you, mm. do you realize how many different kinds of birds there are? Do you realize how many different kind of flowers there are and how stunningly beautiful they are? Do you, do you realize that there's a fish with a, a saw handle, but not a saw handle, but like a saw as its nose? <laughs> That didn't just happen, people. Hummingbirds. I mean, I could just go on and on about um, it. To me, they're so obviously um, a creator and 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 a, and a pattern of um, order. Uh, however, it got there. Whether it was partially through evolution, which there's science for that. And whether it was partially, you know, otherwise. But I do know this. Uh, once when I was 13 or so, I was at that famous uh, uh, Boy Scout camp in New Mexico. I think it was called Philpod or something like that. The big Boy Scout camp. And um, I got uh, cut off from the group. And I was walking uh, to my death. 
I was walking off the side of a mountain and I swear it's only happened twice in my life, three times, but in my spirit, it said, stop walking. Mm. So I stopped walking. If took about three more steps, I'd have fallen off the side of the mountain. Mm. And that's happened three times in my life. Uh, that time I paid attention. The other two times I didn't and bad stuff <laughs> happened. <laughs> so if, if you ever get the voice, pay attention. Anyway, yeah. I just wanted to say, hey, our channel is evolving. And uh, Larry's part of the program. And, pr and part of the reason it is, is um, A, because... Uh, you are so eclectic and you have a broad range of interests and B you have um, a team of people around you who, who bring in all sorts of different backgrounds and um, yeah. yeah, ideas and stuff. We're starting uh, on Monday. We have a, a new life coach, Angie with a J spell Angie with a J and um we're going to start with a show about over-functioning and, and her, where she comes from is more from a recovering uh, female counter-dependent or over-functioner. So that, that'll bring a whole nother um, uh, voice uh, to, to the various uh, uh, areas of recovery that people struggle with. There's one person can't, have all the voices for all the people. You need a lot of voices. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and just before we close, um, uh, Francis Collins, we mentioned, you know, that uh, Sarah, whom we were talking about, got to work with and uh, is now Tony Fauci's boss. <laughs> cool. uh, Francis and his wife started uh, an organization called BioLogos, B-I-O-L-O-G-O-S. Um, you can find it online, and, and the whole purpose of it is to show that uh, science and religion are not in conflict, um, that it's not like that guy on the, on the beach, you know, I don't believe in God because I believe in science. You, you can believe in both, <laughs> well, and that's what BioLogos is all about. Who, who wouldn't want to believe in science? Science yeah. has, has created the vaccine that's going to save millions of people's lives. Uh, you know, I hope we get our pursuit. <laughs> you should be in line next. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I looked at an algorithm that that uh, shows where you are in line, and we're, well, we're about we're about a third of the way down. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to say about Sarah and her journey? No. Last I heard, she's doing great. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Um, like I said, we're going to have a series of uh, shows about people that Larry has worked with who've been stuck in quicksand and unable to move and had some spiritual woundings or misperceptions and uh, he's going to be sharing how he uh, helped them. I, I don't think you went and pulled them out of the mud. You empowered them to get out of the mud uh, on their own power, I assume. Yeah. And so that, that'll be the theme is getting out of the mud, cleaning off your shoes and getting to moving down the road real fast with some uh, spiritual freedom. So yes. thank you for watching, everybody. Yes, indeed. Um, happy, uh, I've lost my mouse. So I'm probably going to need it. Um, uh, happy January the 2nd. Uh, uh, I had all these high hopes for January the 1st. I was going to make videos. I was going to think deep thoughts and write down my goals. Um, I woke up at 2 p.m., uh, ate a chicken sandwich and went back to bed. <laughs> Pretty much the extent of my accomplishment. So far, 2021 uh, <laughs> hasn't been uh, spectacular, but now we have a couple of good shows, so we're, we're killing it. So we'll yeah. see y'all next week. Thank you for watching and God bless.
Bye-bye.